great day outside. We should take the roof off and take advantage of it. So let me just start by asking each of you around the room at, to just look at one another. You are a unique group. Despite the tone of today's political discourse, you've all chosen to be part of an effort that goes beyond rancor and partisanship to determine the best ways to work together in your respective communities. To get up each day, roll up your sleeves, and with enthusiasm, creativity, and a strong willingness to collaborate, do the work that make people's lives in New Jersey better. I'm truly honored to be here with you today. It's difficult to imagine that a dozen years ago, sustainability was a concept just beginning to pick up steam. Dodge Foundation staff at the time had begun to explore how they could leverage the growing interest in sustainability and spark a broader movement here in our home state. We made a small grant in 2006 to a sustainable communities leadership network that was working in parallel with the New Jersey League of Municipalities, the Department of Environmental Protection, and the Board of Public Utilities, all of which were working with their own, on their own community, excuse me, their own sustainability initiatives. The four parties formed a working group the next year, and then in 2009 launched Sustainable Jersey. And wow, wow, really how far they and we at Dodge have come. Look how much progress has been made from that first small investment. Sustainable Jersey is now a signature effort of the foundation, providing some $370,000 annually, one of our largest investments over time in any organization in our history. And the vast majority of New Jersey municipalities are registered in the program. More than a third of those municipalities have become certified. And the Sustainable Jersey for Schools program, which was launched just in 2013, has seen explosive growth with nearly a third of New Jersey school districts and schools participating and over 100 schools already certified. To date, municipalities and schools have delivered thousands of local sustainability actions. The program now consists of over 150 discrete actions and commun that communities can pursue across a spectrum of issues from traditional energy and environment activities to economic development, the arts, and creative civic engagement and community information. We at Dodge believe deeply in the Sustainable Jersey Pro model. We see its impacts every day, not just from our own offices, but in our own communities. We've continued to support the program as it has expanded and broadened in creative ways the definition of what sustainable, uh, sustainability means in community life. Sustainable Jersey has indeed become an integral part of New Jersey's local efforts in strengthening communities. It is a truly remarkable program that we are very proud to support and we are most thankful for all that you do. So my first goal today is simply to acknowledge all of your good work and to thank Randy Solomon for his continued leadership, even without his founding partner, Donna Drews, who, as you know, retired earlier this year and is now the network coordinator for the National Network of Statewide Local Sustainability Organizations. As Randy highlighted, today is all about collective impact. But what is collective impact? The term is used by many people too frequently without going into detail about what, they, what it means. Often, collective impact is confused with its parent concept of collaboration, which, of course, many of you have been doing for a long time sometimes very effectively. A good example of collaboration is in the Great Swamp. In 1988, when I was DEP commissioner, I was faced with a decision about a proposed expansion of the Chatham Township sewage treatment plant. Approving it would have resulted in the discharge of an additional one million gallons of treated wastewater into the Great Swamp, which is a bathtub without a drain. Concerned about the, possible, the possibly damaging impacts on this valuable ecosystem, I denied the permit. But unfortunately, it didn't solve the problem of developmental and environmental pressures in the area. So as we denied the permit, we also created the Great Swamp Watershed Advisory Commission, made up of representatives of the 10 towns surrounding the Great Swamp. While we got close, that initial effort failed to reach a compromise between development and environmental interests. But to the credit of a few local leaders, they picked up where we left off 
and created the Ten Towns Committee, which eventually resolved the issues and over the years have protected this incredibly valuable resource while allowing development with limited impacts on the environment. It is an incredibly good model of regional planning and a terrific model of collaboration. Collective impact, however, is more than collaboration. Think of it as collaboration 2.0. It was first described by John Kenya and Mark Kramer in the Stanford Social Innovation Review in 2011. They identified five key elements that taken together go beyond collaboration. First, all participants have a common agenda for change, including a shared understanding of the problem and a joint approach to solving it through agreed upon actions. Second, data are collected and results measured consistently by all of the participants to ensure alignment and accountability. Third, a plan of action outlines and coordinates mutually reinforcing activities for each participant. Fourth, open and continuous communication is used across the many players to build trust, assure mutual objectives, and create common motivation. And fifth, a backbone organization or organizations are selected or formed with dedicated staff and a specific set of skills to serve the entire initiative and coordinate participating organizations and agencies. Does this sound like sustainable Jersey? It does, doesn't it? You will hear more about collective impact throughout the day and you'll have the opportunity to brainstorm about how to apply this model in your own communities. But let me first set the stage by sharing what I've heard from leaders engaged in this work as being the most meaningful things to do to ensure a successful collective impact effort. The first is having a shared value or vision. The second is having decision makers at the table. The third is having the people you are trying to help also at the table. Fourth is focusing on the willing. Not everyone will want to work with you initially. Others will come with success. And finally, not letting perfect be the enemy of the good. Collective impact is fostering community-driven policy and action to drive change from the bottom up. It is active listening. It is building with the people you serve. It is giving voice and power to people whose lives and livelihoods have long been marginalized. It is stoking passion for the greater good. Collective impact is more than a buzzword. It is a model we can use and adapt, taking its successes and learning from its failures to address today's complex problems. And as we all know, the problems are indeed increasingly complex. Collective impact takes time, energy, and commitment, sometimes up to 18 months just to reach agreement on the issue that is most important for a community to address. Then perhaps as many as six years or more to resolve it. It's tough work but it's enormously rewarding when successful. As I've said to people many times, the most difficult part about collaboration is collaborating. And that's why Dodge has invested in Sustainable Jersey and other collective impact initiatives in New Jersey to, sac to tackle some of our state's most entrenched challenges, such as improving and building sustainable stormwater and wastewater infrastructure in our communities, an effort that is being led by Jersey Waterworks and also ensuring that every child has access to a quality education where the arts are infused in an integrated and sequential fashion, an effort led by Arts Education Partnership. The challenges we face today require trust and partnership among people at all levels of involvement working together. The community in this room has identified sustainability on a broad scale, locally, statewide, and nationwide, as a worthy cause one that we are all striving to achieve. The work green teams are doing at the municipal and school levels through Sustainable Jersey is extremely valuable and successful. It is being driven by community members from around the state, partnering with groups of experts and key public and private institutions to define a common agenda for change and the important tasks related to sustainability in a wide range of sectors. Then, of course, points have been assigned to each of those activities and threshold levels of points have been determined to reach bronze, silver, and now gold certifications. At Dodge, 
We believe strongly in the power of curiosity because, because we know the true innovation comes from asking questions and challenging people to do new things and to try new ideas. With that in mind, I want to suggest an idea to take Sustainable Jersey to the next level of its work, to deepen its model of collective impact. We realize that achieving a common agenda requires more than just the work of municipal and school governing bodies. As we heard from Randy, and we'll hear more later in the agenda, achieving our goals requires engaging with the broadest array of citizens and community institutions. What if we took this model of collective impact and pooled our resources to go really deep within communities? Just as one example, in the news recently, I'm sure you all learned, and as Randy mentioned, that the federal government has decided to pull out of the Paris Climate Agreement. In response, cities and towns and corporations all over this country have stepped up and pledged to fill the void. Here in New Jersey, 15 municipalities already have pledged to uphold the commi commitments enshrined in the Paris Agreement, and another four municipalities coordinated by the Sierra Club have pledged to go 100% renewable. But what does that mean in practice? Do these communities know how to fulfill that pledge? Do they have the capacity? Achieving such lofty goals will require making changes beyond City Hall. It will go beyond, excuse me, it will require going beyond certification. It will impact every person and every business in those communities. It will change the cars we drive, the buildings we build, the taxes we levy, and the personal choices we make in our daily lives. And to achieve the goal will require buy-in and even greater collaboration from citizens and from countless organizations. The Dodge Foundation has numerous grantees and partners that are on the cutting edge of engaging communities, of building the necessary partnerships to reach these kinds of difficult goals. For example, using the convening and energizing success of Creative New Jersey and the local news and information model of Harkin, which is a platform for newsrooms to invite residents to ask questions they'll investigate, Sustainable Jersey could challenge communities to involve the broadest array of representatives from all social, economic, racial, ethnic, civic, governmental, religious, and political groups and help them identify their sustainability goals and the strategies they would employ to reach them. Imagine the impact we could have if we were to utilize the collective resources from around New Jersey and beyond New Jersey, in fact, in a framework of collective impact to help these communities achieve their goals. And imagine the impact that communities would have by making deep systemic change and by coordinating to achieve <clears throat> broader statewide and national goals. One of the real strengths of Sustainable Jersey <clears throat> excuse me, is in making such efforts competitive, in challenging communities to demonstrate better than their counterparts that they have developed a more inclusive and comprehensive process to identify and solve a complex social issue facing them one of the underlying principles of collective impact. And Sustainable Jersey provides the ability to track that collective impact and report back. Sustainable Jersey has done an outstanding job creating a framework for us all to work together to achieve common goals. The progress has been unprecedented and impressive. It's a national model, but it's not enough. I wanna challenge everyone here to think about what more you can do to achieve a more sustainable future. And I want to challenge you to think about the impact that we could have if we focus on helping communities make truly transformational or transformative changes. The point here is to demonstrate that working together across political and ideological lines, citizens can put aside their differences to focus not only on achieving sustainability certification, as they do so well in the Sustainable Jersey program, but also going deeper and resolving the complex social issues that face us if we are ever going to break this current cycle of political rancor and partisanship, it must start at the local level, which as we all know, is the bread and butter of the Sustainable Jersey program. If we want to rise above where we are today, we will need to stand up together, all of, this, all of us in this room and well beyond. 
We will need to marshal our existing resources in a more focused way to address today's challenges. We will need to employ the best principles of collective impact. I welcome the opportunity to help you. Thank you very much.